This was the week where Michael Byrd, the Capitol Police officer who shot and killed insurrectionist Ashley Babbitt, finally went public with his story to NBC's Lester Holt, and it's very moving, and let's take a look. I had been yelling and screaming as loud as I was, please stop, get back, get back, stop. We had our weapons drawn. There's a gun! There's a gun! Bird, only his hand and gun visible, targeted a figure trying to climb through a window. He fired a single, fatal shot, hitting Ashley Babbitt. She was 35 years old, an Air Force veteran, Trump supporter, and QAnon follower. We see your arm out there for a considerable amount of time. Were you wavering? I was taking a tactical stance. You're ultimately hoping that your commands will be complied with, and unfortunately they were not. Former President Trump has, has talked about you and this, and this incident. He says she was murdered. What does it feel like to hear that from a former president? Well, it's disheartening. If he was in the room or anywhere and I'm responsible for him, I was prepared to do the same thing for him and his family. Would you have his back today if you were so assigned? I sure would, because it's my job. As I said, your name has, has been on the internet for some time in an, in an unofficial way. A lot of rumors, a lot of accusations, one of which is that you had some sort of political motive. Um, you, were, you were a political wow. operative. I do my job for Republican, for Democrat, for white, for black, red, blue, green. Capitol Police in their uh, press release after exonerating you said your actions potentially saved members and staff from serious injury and possible death. What was it like to hear those words, to see those words? Those words meant a lot because that's exactly what I did on that day. All right, that was uh, Michael Byrd, um, who was the Capitol Police officer who shot and killed Ashley Babbitt. And he went on to say that he's faced a lot of death threats, people saying that, you know, he should be beheaded, you know, on brand vanilla ISIS shit. Um, I don't know, Brett, what, what are your reactions to just seeing, seeing him come forward and, and, and those words? I mean, I didn't learn anything from that that I didn't already believe to be true. Like that someone who was working didn't want to shoot anybody. And mm -hmm. that, like, I also imagine exactly what the other side's going to say. Like, no one waited for that. That's one of those things that everybody already has what they're going to say before they hear it. And there's nothing that guy can say to change anyone's minds along the way. Like, if Christine Blasey Ford's account of Brett Kavanaugh couldn't have people come ar come away with, like, a different opinion of what happened that day or what this guy was like or any of that, then there's no way that guy's going to do it in a time that charge. Like, already, people immediately, during that interview and after, people were vilifying him and lauding mm -hmm. Ashley Babbitt as some kind of hero. When truly, like, they are, take the vanilla ices all the way, like, that's their martyr. And they've already started. They're getting her family. They're getting her friends. He, she was a trespasser, to say it nicely, and a terrorist, to say it accurately. Yes. Like, she came there. She, the, the next step was Nancy Pelosi's neck. For her. Or Mike Pence's neck. That's what they were doing. Those weren't the people, like, on a tour. Those, there, were, there were things up against that door. And there were people with guns pointing them in there. And they had been told many times along the way on John on, on damage report. I was saying like they already passed the outer gate of the Kabul airport. They got past the 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 other the second gate of the Kabul, the Abbey gate. They were mm. on the runway at that point trying to get into a plane. That's where she was in in relation to the complex to put it in their warmonger ideas in parlance or whatever like that that's where she was and she got shot and killed because she was a terrorist yeah and if you support the police on the right then you should support this guy for doing his job i mean that's the thing that i i think is been thrust into full view is the double standard on display over and over again when it comes to blue lives matter which blue lives who are they defending um ashley babbitt was a vet 
was a right. She she was in the Air Force, mm -hmm. like, and there were a lot of folks. And so you you realize also once again the radicalizing force that going to fight the foreign you know other enemy has on you and and makes you believe you know all kinds of things. And like also is is the military can be a very radicalizing force. It can it cannot be. Not everyone goes through that, but it can be, and it preps you and primes you for a lot of the violence that we saw on January 6th. And a lot of folks were either former officers, current or former military. And that's, that's a reckoning we have to do. I will say watching him come forward one, I thought it was incredibly brave. I am a softy. And so man, watching him have tears in his eyes, just like seeing the other Capitol police officers who testified uh, for, in the hearing, seeing them get choked up and emotional, you realize it's not a like, I felt hurt or I was scared. That, those aren't the tears. The tears are, man, I felt let down. Like I felt let down by my country that, that I can't believe this is happening, number one. Number two, I can't believe that when I've tried to defend, you know, Congress people that I've been thrown under the bus, that I've been vilified. Like that, that and I know that te those tears, and I don't mean to sound super like, sentimental about this but like when i was like arrested for protesting once when i didn't mean to get arrested it was not a direct action i remember crying and i was like why the fuck am i crying francesca and i was like oh right you're crying because you're so disappointed that like your country sucks so hard and that like you have to be this you still have to be there and you've got hung out to dry um so yeah the, the last thing i'll say is i can't believe more shots weren't fired I mean, Brett, can you believe like this is like one, one shot, really? There's not, there hasn't been that much gunfire. There wasn't that much gunfire. And if they were anyone else, if they were disabled uh, activists fighting to not rescind Medicaid, they would have been, it would have been open fire, open season. I I don't know. I can't like speak to that. I can say what my gut is, which is yes, but like I don't know for a fact because it hasn't happened. But, um. Yeah, I there the other the flip side of that is there are like are they badasses or are they cowards? Like if they're really there, I don't I'm not I've had you know the skill of the last 6 years has been to you know read a Trump supporter accurately. Can you? <laughs> like I don't know. What do they want? I'm sure there were people in there that were like I'm going to beat the crap out of police. There we have video of people shoving police officers and the police officers not doing anything. And we have video of a police officer deciding to pull the trigger. Everybody, I guess you know, to your point like everybody who shoved a police officer and didn't end up dead is should be grateful. Um it's yeah. just yeah, it's a I, I after watching that video, I'm still of the perspective that not all cops are bastards. I'm still of the perspective that like there are a lot of bastards all, all over the place and that those folks wanted to storm the Capitol and freaking. And, and whether they knew they they were doing this or not, they were threatening the lives of elected representatives in a way that is not in uh, in in following of the Constitution. So like yeah. they're treasonous terrorists. And I know that people on their side hold like the analogs to that group to a much different standard. But as I've always said, I love double standards. Why wouldn't you want more standards? I want more ice cream. I want more money. I want more standards. Having two standards just makes me more of an open-minded person that I can hold two standards at the same time and not really acknowledge it or feel bad about myself. Mm. When you hold two ice creams at the same time, do you also not feel bad about yourself? I feel so good, dude. I feel bad <laughs> if a single I regret nothing. What's going on, Fran Tifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.